Does the thought of talking on the radio with ATC make your palms sweat? Would you rather scrub grease and oil off the belly of an airplane than click the push to talk button? In this video, we'll be covering pilot radio communication basics. We'll introduce some basic information, then work through some scenarios. <laughs> Let's start with the basics. All aviation radio communication takes place in a shared environment. This means everyone can listen, but only one person can talk at a time. With that in mind, we need to try and balance the need to communicate well against being as quick and efficient as possible. Essentially, we should strive to click the mic, say what we need, and then stop talking so somebody else can. There are four basic types of pilot radio communication. One, initial contact with an ATC service. Two, responses including acknowledgments, clearances, or questions. Three, handoffs. Four, follow-up contacts. Let's walk through each of these. We'll start with initial contact. This is used when you're contacting a service out of the blue and you suspect they don't know anything about you. In these cases, I use the five W's to help remind myself what to say. They stand for who you are talking to, who you are, your aircraft type and registration number, minus the N, where you are on the airport or in relationship to an airport or navigation facility, the weather, and what you want to do. For example, let's say you're hoping to depart VFR from Rochester International Airport heading east. You listen to ATIS and learn that the current weather is Bravo. Using the five W's for initial contact with Rochester ground would sound like this. Rochester ground, Archer 12345, on the GA ramp, with Bravo, VFR departure to the east. Easy peasy. <laughs> Next are responses, including acknowledgments, clearances, or questions. For this type of contact, you've received information, a clearance, or have been asked a question by ATC. In each of these cases, communication should be very simple. You'll state your response, and you'll state who you are. For both acknowledgments and clearances, I recommend repeating back exactly what they've told you. Let's say you've changed frequencies and ATC gives you an updated altimeter setting. It may sound like this. Archer 12345, Des Moines altimeter 30.12. Your reply should be Des Moines altimeter 30.12, Archer 12345. If ATC gives you a clearance or instruction, you must read back or repeat the instruction, then give your identification. Let's say you've received the following command Archer 12345, maintain VFR at or above 4,500 feet. Your response would sound exactly like this. Maintain VFR at or above 4,500 feet, Archer 12345. Notice, in both cases, I repeated back exactly what ATC said, then gave my identification. This lets them know I've heard the information and I intend to act upon it. Also, if I repeat it back incorrectly, it gives them a chance to correct me. What about questions? Let's say Rochester Tower asks if you'd like right or left traffic in the pattern. That could sound like, Archer 12345, right or left traffic. If you want right traffic, you would reply, right traffic, Archer 12345. Notice, the communication is structured exactly the same, whether it is an acknowledgement, a clearance, or a response to a question. <laughs> Next, handoffs. These are when ATC asks you to contact another facility. In these cases, the new facility knows about you and is expecting you. Therefore, they just need to hear from you and get a quick position report or comment regarding your intentions. For these situations, we use three of the W's. Who they are, who you are, and where you are or what your intentions are. <laughs> Suppose you've been handed off to Rochester Tower from Rochester Approach. When you first contact Rochester Tower, you should say something like, Rochester Tower, Archer 12345, inbound, full stop. If you're on an IFR flight plan or using VFR flight following, there is a slightly different format, but we'll cover that in a future video. <laughs> Let's move on to follow-up communication. Sometimes you need to recontact air traffic control because you have a question, a request, or you want to provide them some information, such as a PI rep. These are very similar to handoffs, and you will only use three of the W's. Who you want to talk to, who you are, and what you want. For example, if you have a question for Minneapolis Center, you would say, Minneapolis Center, Archer 12345, with a question. And those are the four types of pilot radio communication and how they might sound. Now, let's work through a scenario. As a pilot departing a towered airport, there is a general flow you need to follow. It looks like this. One, get the current weather. 
Two, acquire your clearance, whether VFR or IFR. Three, request and receive permission to taxi to the departure runway, including the ability to cross any intermediate runways. Four, request and receive permission to take off and which direction to fly once takeoff is achieved. Five, receive permission to change frequencies as you move from one control service center to another. So let's assume we're departing Rochester, heading VFR eastbound with current weather of Bravo. Using the flow and the four types of communication, let's see if you can work out who to contact and what to say. So who should we contact first? We'll start with Rochester ground. And what would that sound like? I suggest the following. Rochester ground, Archer 12345, on the service ramp with Bravo, departing VFR to the east. How'd you do? Were you close? <laughs> now you're ready to taxi. So you call up ground for the second time to let them know. What would you say? Well, I'd recommend Rochester Ground, Archer 12345, ready for taxi. Ground will respond with something like Archer 12345, taxi to runway 13 via Hotel Alpha. Well, is this a question or is this a clearance? And how should you respond? Since this is a clearance, your response should be taxi to runway 13 via Hotel Alpha, Archer 12345. Make sense? Now you're at the departure end of the runway. You've done your run up and you're ready for takeoff. What would your transmission to Rochester Tower sound like? Remember, this is the first contact with them, so it should sound something like the following. Rochester Tower, Archer 12345, holding short of runway 13, ready for departure. Notice we've left the weather out. Now, you can certainly add it. However, since we just gave it to ground for our taxi instructions, many pilots leave it out. Finally, you're climbing out and leaving Rochester airspace. What would your transmission to Rochester Tower sound like? If you're not on flight following or an IFR flight plan, then when you're leaving the airspace, your transmission should sound something like the following. Rochester Tower, Archer 12345, departing the airspace, requesting frequency change. If you are on flight following or an IFR flight plan, you'll stay on frequency until they hand you off to the next service. Does all this make sense? Before we leave this scenario, here are some additional hints to make you sound more professional. First, don't try to sound cool. As a pilot or student pilot, you're already cool. Try to only use terms defined in the pilot controller glossary. I've included a link below if you'd like to purchase one. <laughs> Second, you should always start the conversation with your aircraft type and the full registration number minus the N at the beginning. Sometimes ATC will reply with a shortened version, usually the aircraft type and the last three characters of the registration. However, since many aircraft have similar sounding registration numbers, to avoid confusion, only shorten your call sign if air traffic control does. And now here's a bonus cheat code. If you're finding air traffic control is speaking too quickly, let them know you're a student pilot and they will slow down. You can even do this as a private pilot too. However, they might get a little suspicious if you're flying a 737 or an Airbus 380. <laughs> so how'd you do? If you'd like more practice, I've added a link to another scenario in the description below. If this video was helpful, please comment, hit the thumbs up, and consider subscribing. Also, please check out the links in the description. If you're an Amazon shopper, using the links doesn't cost you anything extra, but by clicking on the link, any purchases you make can provide a small commission that helps support the production of these videos. Any support is greatly appreciated. <laughs> Finally, if you're looking for more flight training information, I'd recommend watching this video next. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching. Fly safely, and I will see you next time.